You see, the Holy Land, this is, this is the, this is the 32 bone, uh, 33 bones that make the spinal, uh, the spinal cord, the uh, spinal um, column, okay? And the, the, it's always divided into five parts. Now, in the Bible, <coughs> in uh, Genesis, let me see, Jacob, in uh, Genesis 32, uh, it says this, finally Jacob was left by himself. This shows how much of this science is in the scriptures. When people read about Jacob, they think, oh, that's Israel. That's, that's, oh, Israel, Israel. Because he got his name changed from Jacob to Israel. I'm going to show you how that happened. Right? He gets the sun, because Jacob, it's got to be the sun. It's talking about light. Remember, everything's talking about light. So you read the Bible, the character is light or magnetism. Just remember that, and you'll decode it. So Jacob is down here. Israel is up here. Abram is here. Abraham is up here. The, name, the sun gets a, a, a name change at, at that equilibrium point. See, this is angular momentum here. This is the wave. Remember, this is the wave amplitude. This is, this is the wave length. Remember, we had the sine wave going down here, right? So this is the amplitude, OK? Um, so. So the sun is always going to change his aspects as he goes through those quadrants. In fact, the Egyptians said, this is Horus, this is Ra, this is Set, and this is Osiris, which are just aspects of light. You see, these four quadrants, these four seasons, these four stations were given their quality of light. And this light is Horus, the newborn sun. That's Horus that Isis holds in her hands, because here the sun is born. And in fact, on the 25th of March, that's when Gabrielle says to Mary, you're going to conceive. Remember Gabby? Yeah, the messenger of God? He says to Mary, he says, you're going to conceive. Sure does. On the 25th of December. From the 25th of March, nine months later, 25th of December, the sun is born. That's, that's what it's talking about. And that's why we celebrate Easter. Because also, the son is resurrected here. He dies on the cross, and then he's resurrected. Um, but <clears throat> going back to Jacob, finally Jacob was left by himself. Then a man began to grapple with him until the dawn ascended. Do you remember this story? Yeah. Okay. Good. When he got to see that he had not prevailed over him, then he touched the socket of his thigh joint, and the socket of Jacob's thigh joint got out of place during the grappling with him. After that he said, let me go, for the dawn has ascended. For the dawn has ascended. To this he said, I am not going to let you go until you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? To which he said, Jacob. Then he said, your name will no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. Where the dawn ascends, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel. Okay? For you have contended with God and with men, so that you have at last prevailed. Here the son is contending with enemies. He's, he's, he's contending with God with these angels, remember the bad angels of Saturn? And then he, this, is, this is all about, here, this is all about the sun contending. He's, tr he's struggling to bring back the lighter. Remember the plus plus over here, the spring? He's struggling to pass over. He's struggling to, to grow his rays so that he can be longer days, shorter nights. Because here is longer nights shorter days. So this is the struggle period where Jacob struggles with an angel and then he succeeds. Okay? Now, now it gets better. <laughs> Hang on to your seats. This gets really, really good. Um, because you have prevailed. In turn, Jacob inquired and said, tell me, please, your name. However, he said, why is it that you inquire for my name? With that, he blessed him there. Hence, Jacob called the name of that place Peniel. Sound familiar? Pineal? Hang on. 
So he called the place, remember, um, and because to quote him, I have seen God's face, I have seen God face to face, and yet my soul was delivered. And then it goes on to talk about he sees a ladder and angels going up and down the ladder and he was sleeping on a stone. Remember that, the, the, the stone of scone? Queen Elizabeth claims to be coronated on the stone of scone. That's Jacob's stone where he had this dream. Right? Remember the, the Union Jack flag and the blue and red that's on there? This is all Israelite and Freemason Freemasonry symbolism, okay? Uh, so, <clears throat> this is the ladder, the stairway to heaven, the 33 degrees of Freemasonry. This is how you get up to heaven. Heaven's up here. The pineal gland, gland is at the top where Taurus is, where I showed you that Taurus has the Pleiades in it, and the Pleiades corresponds to the pineal gland. That's the pineal that he's talking about, where Orion is and Taurus up here, the two hemispheres of the left and right brain. And he said that he saw God face to face. This is where you see. This is the third eye. These ones, these see, this just sees a very thin slither of reality. Very, very thin. This one sees the lot. You see God face to face. And where was the stone that he laid his head on? Would that be the, um, the sacrum? What does sacrum mean? Does that mean sacred? Oh yes it does. See this, the sacrum is five of these, five of these um, spinal bones fused together. It's a stone, it's the stone of scone. This is where Jacob lays his head and then he sees the angels climbing up the ladder and he sees God face to face and calls it the place where he saw God, Pinel. This is the brain and these are the 12 nerves of the brain, the 12 um, cranial nerves, and there are their names, okay, optic, olfactory, facial, etc. These are the 12 disciples that Jesus sends down into the circuit of Galilee to preach to the Gentiles. Remember the, the Gentiles that you're supposed to kill, those Perizzites and Jebusites? That's your lower nature. Light has a, no, a lower nature. That's what we call evil. And that's down there. This is hell. The heart is the middle earth. And then this is the heaven. You see? You go up into the heaven. The right brain, remember that one? The intuitive? Well, there's the two hemispheres of the brain. See that? That's the corpus callosum. That's the Red Sea. To get from the children of Israel, to get to the Holy Land, must cross the corpus callosum. You must cross from the left brain into the right brain to get back to the Garden of Eden or the Holy Land. And guess where it is? Here. There it is, in the head. The head is here. So when the sun finally comes into exaltation, it's in Aries and Taurus, in the head. And what has happened is we, we have a chance of passing into the Holy Land. It's in the head. Here is the structure of the bone, of the brain. And you have the bone on the outside there, there's the brain. And you have here the dura mater and the arachnoid here. That's like a arachnoid means, you know, spider web, right? So there's a web separating the dura mater from the pia mater. The pia mater, that's the holy of holies, and the arachnoid that separates it from the dura mater, which is the outer court courtyard of the Gentiles, is always separated by a curtain. This is the temple of God. The holy of holies is the pia mater. And please get into Bill Donahue at hiddenmeanings.com. He goes right into this. He goes right into all the stuff that's going on in the body. Um, for instance, Ammon's horn. Ammon's horn is in the brain. You see? Ammon? Would that be the hidden Ammon? Yeah, it's in the brain. That's Jesus. In Jesus' name, Ammon. The, the hippocampus. The hippocampus is in the brain, isn't it? What does hippo mean? It means horse. 
Jesus is always coming into the kingdom, into the, the, the Jerusalem, the holy city, on a white horse. That's the hippocampus. <laughs> fornax. In here, there's the fornix, right? And um, fornax is actually a constellation that's right up there on the top of Aries. Fornax, fornix, coincident? No coincidence. Cerebrum. Right, this is the, the cerebrum is covering over the body, is it not? Have you heard of the cherubs? The cherubim? This is, this is the sort of stuff that Bill, Bill Donahue is pointing out. Cerebrum. Covering. The covering angels. It's covering over. That's what cherubs, that's what it means. Well, that's what the cerebrum is. They are the cherubs. It's all up here. Mary Magdalene, have you heard of the amygdala in the limbic system? The amygdala. Um, oh, look, I'll stop at that. There's so much. <clears throat> now, I will go through my notes because that's what I was supposed to do from the start. <laughs> um, remember I was talking to, to you about uh, the right side and how the right side is always the good side? This is the right side, right? This is the intuitive side, the higher mind, the hermetic mind, the wisdom side of things. This is the analyt analytical, experiential in intellect side masculine in its process okay um, well here are some of the scriptures Revelation 5.1 then I saw in the right hand of him who was seated on the throne a scroll written within and on the back sealed with seven seals <clears throat> this is on the back on your back on the spine that's where the seven seals are they are the seven chakras. You, you remember the story in the Bible where queen, the Queen of Sheba goes to visit Sol Amun? Remember I told you Ammon's horn is up here, right? The Queen of Sheba. Sheba means seven. Right? The queen of Sheba comes from the south. She comes from the south and she goes up to Solomon's temple to visit Solomon. That's the seven chakras. That's seven chakras going up the spine and, and Amun... Solamun or Solomun, Amun, anything like that is at the top of the spine and the seven chakras, that's the Queen of Sheba, the spine. And as we activate them and change their polarity from negative to positive, we change vices into virtues and we change all of these seven elements like the sun is doing, turning lead into gold. He's going from lead to tin to iron, copper, mercury, silver, gold and he's doing that all the time. This is an alchemical process. This is mind thinking. Remember Walter Russell says mind thinking. Mind is electric. Electric mind thinketh. And that's how it, it does that with angles. It's all about light angles which are angels. You see, never forget that those seven orbs they are angelic entities. They are um, psychic spiritual, physical bodies like we are, higher order. And, um, and, and that's where we're destined to go as we go closer through the higher up light back to source. This is just one... We, we appear solid. It's, it's just movement. Everything's movement. I mean, this is, this is just one octave of our journey back. And there's, there's, uh, there are eight octaves above back to cause. It's a long way. Our sun is eight degrees removed from cause, which means there are suns bigger and more ethereal that go back to the, the central sun of the universe. And what is there? There is undivided light. God is light. 
And as that light divides, then everything you see, just as they explain these guys here in the electric universe, everything comes from electricity. All of it. It's an electric universe. Sorry? From source, from cause. Eight degrees. Um, in, in that our sun is... Um, It's a low order light body. It's, it's, well, it's, it's not one of the highest order light bodies that there are. Okay, it gets, they get more etheric. Our sun is like eighth in line. Where, where it's only a very small star. Where is eight degrees coming from? Eight degrees? Yeah. Um, the esoteric science. Yep, eight degrees. In Kabbalah, we have, this is, all of this, so this is Adam Kadmon. And these are the four emanations. Remember, Atsaya and uh, Bariya, that's, that's all in here. These are the four emanations. And there's 125 steps back to cause. Um, 125 steps. Yeah. Eight. See, we're in this octave. Next octave is the one above the head. There's more chakras that go all the way up. Okay? It's all about light. Chakras. Radiating lights. So, what, this, the script that, that's uh, being presented here for this um, system, this one that gets there in the same state while it's living on a star in another system, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't there be a different script and a different set of circumstances? Beautiful question. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I, I thought that would turn up, that question. Um, well, this, this, explains light. In our local neighbourhood, what we are as a construct here in this world. Both in our local neighbourhood and in the universe of light. All through the universe of light. See, no one invented this. This is, this so is if there. If I go to Star X, I'm going to find the same story, the same group of planets, the same, same script. It's all electric. Yeah, it's all light and it all does. Well, it be all the same. What some systems might have more than X amount of planets and stuff. That's right. Um, yeah, that's right. But <laughs> this is where I want to get into some real deep esoteric stuff. Um, Alvin Boyd Kuhn again, okay? This might answer that. Let's see if that answers. Um, whew, it's a big, big subject. <clears throat> Nature sounds a seven key octave and divine mind sounds a 12 key diap diapason. So nature, one, two, three, seven, the seven orbs, sounds a seven key octave and divine mind sounds a 12 key diapason. Three, four, seven, 12 and 40 are indeed among the most sharply revelatory keys to the entire system of scriptural interpretation. It is ridiculous that Christian exegesis of its own book has for 16 centuries laboured at the interpretation with practically no regard for the meaning of these numbers. It will later be seen as a clear evidence of esoteric incompetence. It has remained for students outside the pale of Christian apologetics to interpret the Bible most capably and profoundly. Then he goes on to talk about this 12 and 7, okay? And he says this. The creative command, let there be light, was the divine fiat that ordered the suns to shine and the galaxies to glisten. And light in the physical era, area was the perfect analogue and symbol of light of the light of intelligence. Right, there's physical and there's intelligent light. Okay? That was to glow in the domain of ignorance as solar light was to irradiate the universe of space. Twelve lights would therefore grace... Uh, sorry? Uh, Twelve lights would therefore be the most apt symbol of the twelve basic powers of divine intelligence. And this brings us back to the primal, true designation of the 12 rays of genius in man. Remember the 12 cranial nerves. 
<coughs> the twelve saviors of the treasure of light. In various other symbol symbolic typings, they were also the twelve reapers of the golden grain, the twelve harvesters of the field of Amenta, the twelve builders, the twelve carpenters, twelve mansions, masons, the twelve potters, the twelve weavers of the pattern, twelve fishermen, twelve rowers of the boat with Horus, twelve sailors in the ship of Ra, the sun. They are the twelve powers of sun god intelligence. And as ancient philosophy brings out the astounding facts that sunlight is the eventual product of divine mentation, the light of the sun is the pure energy of intellect, says Proclus, in one of the most illuminating sentences ever uttered. The twelve rays of the solar logos, remember logos means sound, that's a vibration of, of love and light. And that's what Jesus is called, the logos, the word of God. The word was made flesh. The word is the sound, and sound makes physical things appear. That's the word made flesh. This is the word made flesh. This is all a product of sound. You're all sustained by sound. Have you seen cymatics? And how it, it creates all that. You put sand on the, and you, and, you, and you charge it with it. You put a, a high frequency sound on that table with sand. That's cymatics. And you see all these forms, geometric angles. When, and they, as they turn up the frequency, those patterns get more and more complicated. That's all this going on. Remember, movement, identity, differentiation, and rest. Guess what that is? According to Plutarch, being. From being comes movement. Movement first, and movement is electric and magnetic. Let's continue on, because this gets better. The Logos, at last in men and gods, the twelve faculties of spiritual intelligence, the evolution of which makes each man in his enyod, enyod an annual career, a Christ, instructing and training his twelve disciples within the confines of his own individuality. They were the fourfold differentiation under the symbolism of fire, air, water, and earth. Of each of the three kings of kingly powers of divine intellect into which primordial unity of mind breaks up in its necessary fragmentation as it descends into matter. You see, divine mind, the unity, unity of mind, see, God is unconditioned consciousness. These are conditions. The being is conditioned. When we come down here, we, have, we receive these conditions. And this is how it works, okay? Remember fire, air, earth and water, cardinal, fixed, mutable. Please focus on that. This is the key to understanding how mind thinketh, how the universe gets things done. And whether it's local, as your question said, or whether it's universal. This shows that it's universal. This is, this is a universal... This is no one's intellectual property. You know, it's not, it's not the tarot although the tarot comes from this. The tarot is made up of these, these are the 12 cards of the tarot, plus 10 of the planets of the solar system, 22. That's your major arcana. The 20, the 20 letters of the Hebrew alphabet comes from this. All systems, every single language comes from this, comes from light. Check out the work of Stan Tenen. He's a Jewish scholar, and he, explained how, he explains how the torus field, remember the torus? There's the torus field. That's the light. The photon does that and replicates itself spirally. The flower of life. There's the torus there, the earth, the Van Allen belt. There's the vector equilibrium. There's 12 spokes in the middle of that. That's these 12 spokes here. And it does this, the 64 I Ching, 64 on the chessboard. Um, this is all those numbers that we're talking about here. 
Three, always turns up. Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. Four, Yodhe, Vahe, Jehovah. The Cosmocrator, the Maker. This is Mount Zion, this is Mount Meru. This is Shambhala, it's the Kabbalah. It's everything, it's the Father, the Mother and the Christ. It just is. You can't invent this. I, can, I, could, I have not moved any of these items. I found Saturn here. Saturn rules Aquarius. So I'm just showing you where he rules. And all the other stuff, it's all there. It's been there forever. So these seven, this, there's always seven, and they take, they take these particular uh, conditions. This is what is needed. This sevenness is needed to be the dynamic active force of making matter appear, motion, happen. These are the seven dynamos and they work with the twelve, right? This is the twelve aspects of, of the twelve that we have. We are made also in this image. This is, this is the twelve cranial nerves. So wouldn't it make sense though that if we were like perfected beings and stuff, if there's these like seven dynamos in there, they're like would be creating a confusion. I, I would imagine if we were like perfect beings, there would be like 12 planets within the spheres, one for each one, and we'd be like uh, not so uh, challenged, so to speak, mm. without immortality and eternal. I, I, what I'm picking up here is maybe this, this script that was localised through all of this maybe is the right script for the condition that we're in. Yep. It may not be necessarily the script for our future evolution. That's right. Yep. True. Yeah, yes. Because this is, this is, um, uh, this caters for the lowest degree of life, the hex. You know? Yeah. The rest. Yep. Yep. So as we, as we inherit the higher, yeah, when we go to the, ch to the chakras above the head, we're still going to be visible in that, in that dimension. Absolutely. Perfect. Yes. Isn't the but point of it, though, that we're still looking at this from a human understanding? Yes. Which is where we are, so we can't go past that understanding. Well, first, first let me point out, first we have to understand it. Then we can perhaps contemplate, because we are source, we can dream the hologram any way we want. If we want something else, we can use different geometries, we can set up different things. Yeah. I agree, we have to know the story of where Beautiful. we are. And I think what you're doing here, and feel what you're doing is presenting from what is. Yep. Yeah. No, well said. There's yeah, because... Yes. Um, there's a planet that used to be after Mars, which is um, Maldi. How come that doesn't come into it? Yeah, well, see, again, uh, Marduk was between uh, Jupiter and Mars, yeah? Now it's the... Um, we call that the asteroid belt? Is that right? Yep. Yeah, okay. The Kuiper belt is, of course, way out past Pluto. And the Van Allen belt is, of course, surrounding the Earth. Okay? Now, yeah, because I had to correct that in one video. Uh, I've, it's wrong. And I've <laughs> corrected it in the YouTube comments. Um, because, yes, that was a planet. It was a watery planet. You see, there's no doubt that this planet was config this solar system was configured differently, differently over the past. What I'm going to show you soon is mind-boggling about the 15 billion year, million year history of this book. Okay, I'll prove it very simply. So you need to wait for that and it will um, answer a lot of these que questions. It will answer a lot of these questions. But pretty much you can go by this as the way light and mind thinking gets work done. You can go by this. This might change a little bit. So all, what you're basically saying here is that all the churches, all the religions, all the stuff that we've been fed on this planet has been basically using this script. This is it. Yeah, okay. Yep. And, okay, and, and how light works. This, yeah. and, and get a load. This, this next portion I'm going to read will blow your mind and you'll understand what is going on here. Okay? Remember, air is fire. This is cardinal fire. This is fixed fire, Leo. 
and this is mutable fire. <coughs> so if we do this, we see the Brahma stage of fire, we see the Vishnu and we see the Shiva stage of fire. Have a look at that closely. Remember, this is the equator and this is summer. Obviously, you're going to get two doses of fire. You're going to get the start of fire where the day begins or where spring begins. You can't make this stuff up. There it is. On cue, cardinal fire. Cardinal is the start, the birth of fire. It's in the head, right? So here it starts, here it's fixed in the sign of Leo. This is the mind, this is the heart. Fire in the mind, because it's an electric brain, computer. Fire in the heart, and fire in the liver, Sagittarius. So what you see is that the Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva stage, cardinal, fixed, immutable stage of fire. And all the other elements are doing the same thing. And if you study them properly, I won't go into it now, I've done it in other presentations, you will see how it works and it harmonizes with the cold aspect, the, the hot and the cold aspect, the positive and the negative. It's all perfect. It's perfect as it is. Here's what he says. <clears throat> um, kingly powers. Mind breaks up in its necessary fragmentation as it descends into matter. How does mind break up as it descends into matter? Mind thinking. Well, it's like this. As water falling from a height breaks up into fragments owing to the resistance of the air and the bloodstream divides from the heart and a tree trunk from its lower stem, so unitary intellect descending from on high breaks up into first a threefold partition and finally into a 12-fold division. Take note. Mind descending breaks up into three. One, two, three. Electric mind creating three and then into 12. And this is how it happens. And remember Paracelsus, what he said about light, that it has the, the virtue of physically, physically healing the body, spiritually healing the, the, uh, the, the mystical part of our nature, the psychic nature and the sensual nature, the physical, uh, the, the emotional nature, the water. Now that's 400 years before Sigmund Freud, uh, before um, Carl Jung gave us this, you know, said that fire is intuition, earth is sensual, air is, well, let's go to here, shall we? Um, yeah, sense, earth. Emotion, water, mind, thinking, air. That's why you, your air signs, they're good with the mind. And there's your intuition, the spirit of fire. Let's continue. In reduction to simplest form, all this means that as in a physical, as in physical matter, and its manifestation on earth, there are four basic differentiations of expression. As fire, air, water and earth, so in mind, there are four analog sub-differentiations. Again, in soul, the same four, and again in spirit, the same four. So the twelve qualities that are to di divinize us are the spirit's fire, air, earth and water, the soul's fire, earth, air and water, and the mind's fire, earth, air and water, all combined in one grand synthesis, the Christ consciousness. There it is. So, when you look at, when you look at things like this, you know, the language of, of angels, of course I said this is the star of David that's going to appear tomorrow in the skies, um, here's another thing that's going to pop up on July the 7th. Remember, July the 4th is Independence Day. See this? It's almost a grand cross. Remember the grand cross. A perfect grand cross must have four 
corners connected. Here, Saturn and Mars are opening up this corner of the, the, the cube, so it's, it doesn't qualify to be a grand cross, but that's going to turn up on July the 7th, three days after July the 4th, Independence Day. Right? July the 4th is Apohelion Day, which means the Earth is furthest away from the Sun. January 4th, it's opposite. July the 4th is around, there's 21st of June. July the 4th is over here. January the 4th is over here. That's perihelion, that's apohelion. This is when July the 4th happens, right? And this is when this is going to happen. They declare independence over here. Most nations celebrate independence over here. Why? Well, because the brightest star in the sky is up here. It's called Sirius. It's in the middle of Gemini and Cancer. Sirius. And Sirius B goes around Sirius. And she is Isis, Mary. She's the one that calls her son Jesus on the 25th of December to start climbing up the mountain to be with her and to be wed in the sign of Cancer. So they conjunct. You see, when the sun finally reaches Cancer, behind the sun will be the brightest star in the sky, Sirius. And the dog days begin. The month or so of hot, hot days, because Sirius is the dog. And Orion is here too, the three stars of Orion. So Orion is also mounted up on the holy mountain, and there is Sirius. So you've got Osiris and Isis together. This is summertime. And, and you see, this is independence because when the sun conjuncts with Sirius, its mother, the sun comes from Sirius. It was ejected from Sirius many millions of years ago. That's the mother. It's literally the mother of our sun. Well, what happens <clears throat> when on that day, you see, look at this, there's, there's, the, there's the sun in Cancer. In Cancer, right? The sun will be opposing Pluto in Capricorn. So that's that red line there. It'll be squaring with Saturn in Libra. Mars will be opposing Uranus in Aries. And what this means, you see, Pluto in this science is the destroyer and the regenerator. And he's in the sign of Capricorn, which means external authority. So he's destroying the external authority with Saturn over here in Libra, the sign of justice. And Saturn, Saturn exalts in the sign of justice. So we've got basically we've got the sun over here. The sun will be over here in Cancer, squaring with Mars over here, and Saturn will be squaring with Pluto over here, and Uranus will be over here. There's the square. That's what's going to happen. It's going to be big. Um, because Uranus in, in Aries is very interesting these days. Uranus is the, the daddy of Saturn, and he's in Aries. He's a fire planet. He loves to be in Aries. Aries is fire. So Uranus is in your heads. You know what Uranus stands for? Individuality. Um, freedom. Doesn't like any boss over his head. So this, with fiery Mars on that particular day, this, this is big action for, for July the 7th. I won't go into it because I've done it on radio shows, I've done it on, there's, there's heaps of stuff that's on YouTube that explains all that. I just want to point to you, to show you, that we're speaking the language of angels here. The language of angles. Sacred geometry. It's all sacred geometry. This is how we manifest. This is who we are. <clears throat> Thomas H. Burgoyne again. <clears throat> By the way, I... Astrology, the light of Egypt, Astrology in its purity, though forming a system of divination, is totally unconnected with either fortune-telling or sensitive, irresponsible mediumship. It is a divine science of correspondence, as above, so below. Don't be misled. This is science. This is clairvoyance. It's not mediumship. 
It is a divine science of correspondences in the study and application of which the intellect and intuition, remember we mentioned that at the start, intellect, intuition, become blended in a natural, harmonious manner. They commence to vibrate in unison. When this unison becomes complete, the ignorant man becomes the prophetic sage. Remember the Gospel of Thomas, make the two one and bring them in the middle. That's what, that's what the hermetic philosophy is all about. It's about balancing this. It's not about believing in the separation. Do not be deluded. Even though it's dualistic in its, in its motion, the universe, it's a oneness. Cause is one. Um, there's just so much mind-boggling stuff that I want to read to you. <clears throat> Physical science... No, that's not what I want to read. I want to read this. Solar force and planetary influence are one and the same. The seven planets of the ancients were but the expressions, so to speak, of the perfect scale of force. That's what seven stands for. The perfect scale of force. Each planet being magnetic by means of solar induction. The sun is the great electrical impregnator of the planets. Here, it impregnates the earth, the blossom. Reflected and still reflects one of the great... Um, sorry, the perfect... Each planet being magnetic by means of solar induction, reflected and still reflects one of the great attributes. Saturn, the cold. Jupiter, the genial. Mars, the fiery. The sun itself, the majestic and commanding power. Venus, the loving influx in nature. Mercury, the inventive and commercial principle. Remember, Mercury is commercial. Merchandise comes from Mercury. Merchant bankers, you see why they have the caduceus of Mercury, the staff of caduceus in all of these big banks, the Federal Reserve, because they love Mercury. Mercury is a hermaphrodite, so he's bronze or brass. He's got tin and copper. Two, and tin is masculine, copper is feminine. You put them together and you get brass, don't you? Or is it bronze? It doesn't matter. Anyway, that's Mercury. Here's the bronze, the brass. You got any brass, man? You know, you got some brass? Yeah, I got some brass here, yeah, I'll buy that. Brass comes from mercury, you see? And silver, money is the moon, because the moon is silver, that's why it's silver. Money is silver, and gold is from the sun. Um, <clears throat> these powers represent states. They, and in themselves within each organism. They constitute the primary factors of our being and must be known if we would obey the divine injunction, man know thyself. The modus operandi of these powers is that all of nature, vibration, in fact the grand basis of all force in vibration, apart from it there is neither mental activity, divine providence, nor physical motion. Vibration is the real source of all phenomena, spiritual, mental, and physical. Remember those three states? Vibration, light, and just another interesting uh, <clears throat> thing that I want to read from here. Uh, we know that There are 22 characters or letters in the alphabet, exactly the same number as in the Hebrew, which was based upon similar principles. These are the Sun, Moon, Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, and the planet Mercury. These constitute the vowels and the diphthongs. Then come the consonants, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces, known as the signs of the zodiac, and lastly the earth, 
And guess what the symbol is? Got the symbol for the earth here. Guess what it is? That's the earth. Remember the sun is this. Okay? That's the earth. Which is a mere cipher like the 22nd letter of Hebrew. In fact, from a symbolical point of view, there is a wonderful affinity between the basic constitution of the two. To commence with the most important orb, the sun stands forth as the eternal, the central force of all. He rules the vital springs of life in man and the love in woman. He rules the heart. That's the heart, Leo. And if he is afflicted by Saturn or Mars or Uranus at birth, the life force or physical vitality will suffer in proportion. His vibrations are electrical, hot, commanding, penetrating and aspiring. In the fiery signs, he is the most powerful, next in the airy, then the earthly, earthy, and lastly, in the watery. So the sun is most powerful in the fiery signs, next in the air signs, next in the earth signs, and least powerful in the watery signs. The moon is next in importance. She appears in power as the handmaid and bride of the sun and reigns as the minister of the solar bounty, etc., etc. Uh, I can read on. I was going to talk about... I'm just going to go through some quick notes and wrap, wrap things up, guys. What's the time? Yeah, OK. 15 minutes. Is that fine? Is that the idea or is it too late already? <laughs> All right, well, look, let, let, let me just try. Uh, I want to read um, from Alan Watts. Uh, you guys familiar with Alan Watts? Great philosopher. Mm. Yeah, get into Alan Watts. You'll learn a lot about meditation and getting into this part. Okay? He explains it. This is what he says. The video on YouTube. What are you? We think we are something in this body, the ego. Focus of conscious attention. The ego is the focus of conscious attention, the radar on the ship, the troubleshooter. You know, the radar, the radar on the ship looking for icebergs, right? Conscious attention is a designed function of the brain to scan the environment. If you identify yourself with your troubleshooter, then naturally you define yourself as living in a perpetual state of anxiety. The moment we cease to identify with our ego and become aware that we are the whole organism, we realise how harmonious things are. There is no difference between the physical and the spiritual. These are out-of-date categories. It's all process. It isn't stuff on the one hand and form on the other. It is pattern. Life is pattern. It is a dance of energy. So, I will never, I will never invoke spooky knowledge. That is to say that I have had a private revelation or I have sensory vibrations going on on a plane which you don't have. Everything is standing right out in the open. I'm not coming to you telling you, hey man, I've got some special, I've got some people in high places that are whispering, teaching me all this stuff. I've got a guru, I've got something special. Nope. There it is. It's out, out in the open, guys. This is our knowledge. And it's coming back. This has been persecuted for too long. This is the knowledge of how mind thinks. You can get to know nature like this. You can get to know the cause. There's only one way to know the cause. That's, study how, that's to study how the, the effect. You see, Walter Russell criticises the Newtonian uh, science because it's all about effects. Science out there, remember his wife, what she said in the introduction? She says it's all about studying effects got no idea about the why or the how and the cause. The cause is simple. That's how it works. It's very, very simple. It's not complicated like they try and make it in the schools. They do that for a reason. 
to confuse us and divide and, and keep everything divided. Oh, astrology is a pseudoscience, it's from the devil. Uh, astronomy, well, don't we'll bother with that. And, and it, it, it's all divided. There's no connection between any of them. This is comprehensive and syncretic at the same time. It's not divisive. And that's what this does. So this is the most universally recognized, this is the most universal symbol that we have. It's the yin and yang. You know? It's all of our languages because these, these make the 12 consonants and then the vowels, of course, remember, are the planets. It all comes from this. So I will never invoke... Okay, I've read that. Um, everything is standing right out in the open. It's just a question of how you look at it. Then you do discover what you do is what the whole universe is doing at the place you call here and now. What you're doing is what the whole universe is doing at the place you call here and now. You are something the whole universe is doing like the same way that a wave is doing what the whole ocean is doing. The real you is not a puppet which life pulses around, pushes around. The real, the real deep you is the whole universe. Um, <clears throat> just please let me um, see if there's any other interesting points that I just want to bring out and I'll just shoot some quick questions if I can. If you've got any questions that have to be asked, please fire away. Okay, let's do the 15 million. We'll finish off with that. Well, right doesn't travel. It's always with its source. It's, it stays at its source. It reproduces itself. Oh, okay. So the speed of reproduction is Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, when you look up at the sky, there are two circles. There are two circles up at the sky, right? The Milky Way galaxy looks like... There's a happy little serpent eating its tail. In fact, that's what it looks like. You can, you can check out any image from any telescope and look at the southern at the at the milky way galaxy and this this is the portion here <clears throat> sagittarius is here and scorpio is here at this crossing um, now this is the milky way galaxy and you'll see it as it goes around it always goes around Right? You, you can always see the Milky Way galaxy. And, and if you watch it, you'll see it's, it, it's, a, it's a serpent eating its own tail. And you can see this happening right here. In fact, um, when you see the, the Milky Way galaxy like that, Scorpio rises like this. And Sagittarius is here, and, and, it's, and, and the arrow is pointing to this area here where the serpent is eating its own tail. The arrow and this tail are pointing to, to, this, to this line. Now, this is crossed by another circle called the ecliptic. This is the galactic plane, and it's crossed by another circle. Let me just take that off. It's getting a bit messy here, isn't it? I can. It's very hard to clean this because it's um, moving. But let me do that again. That's like this, the Milky Way galaxy, okay? And you've got the serpent eating its tail here. Then there's exactly another circle doing that, intersecting. So here we've got, let's put the back the uh, serpent eating its tail here. And so there's the tail there going into here, okay? So we've got, as I said, Sagittarius is here, um, Scorpio is here, uh, Libra is here, 
you've got um, Virgo, you've got um, Leo, Cancer is here. Um, well, this this is the ecliptic. This is the path of the sun, and it intersects it intersects the Milky Way galaxy at two places, one here and one here. These these are the the divine crosses. Now, Ephucus is standing here with one foot here. There's Ephucus, the serpent bearer. He carries the serpent, right? And over here we have Orion in Taurus. There's Gemini, and here's Taurus. Um, here, and Orion is right here. Orion is actually... He's reaching out with his hand. There's the seven stars of Orion. He's reaching out to... The, and, and he's, he's got the, the, red, the red star in his shoulder, Betelgeuse. He's reaching out to, to grab the crossing where the Milky Way galactic equator crosses the ecliptic at, si at 60 degrees. Right, and there's Gemini. Castor, one of the twins, he's standing with one foot on that crossing. And Orion is reaching out for that foot because this is a very, very special fulcrum. These are two fulcrums of the system. Try and find these. If you go out tonight for March and April and May, look to the west, you'll see Orion setting head first. When you spot Orion head first, look to the east and you'll see Scorpio, Scorpio coming up. Orion setting and Scorpio coming up. So what you, what you see is that the galactic plane is crossed at two, two sections. And Ephucus is standing at one section and Orion is at the top of the other section between Gemini. Remember, Gemini is here and Taurus is here. So Orion is... The, the Milky Way galactic plane is intersecting here and at the bottom of the torso. You see, because remember, Sagittarius is the upper thighs and then Capricorn is the knees um, and then what have we got? Aquarius is the shins and then uh, this should go all the way around here. Pisces is... Um, Pisces, and then what have we got? Aries, yeah? Aries, okay. Aries is here. So all of, all of this, this section here, that's basically the legs. Then from the fucus, where Scorpio is, the, the bottom of the spine, see, the fucus, the serpent bearer, is right at the, the genitive area, at the bottom of the spine. So he's got to climb up the spine to get to his brother Orion, which is here, the Lamb of God. Now, what's going on is this. The Earth is at an axis of 23.5 degrees. This, the axis of the Earth is, is forever migrating around and it takes 2 million 500, uh, sorry, 500 and, what's this, 2 million... 500,920 years. Okay. Um, in this book, The Light of Egypt, Walt, um, Thomas Burgoyne explains that the axis of the Earth is continually going all the way around. Now, procession, the figure for procession is um, 25,920 years, right? When you add two zeros to that, that's what you call a polar day. That's a polar day. It's two million, two and a half million years for the axis to do a complete revolution. It's not stuck at 23 and a half degrees. Now, these polar days, they are actually the days that the Bible talks about. So each day, you know, when God creates let there be light and there's a, an evening and a morning. That's how long they are. These are the days. So there are six of those. Add six of those and that is exactly where we are in the stream of time. What is going on is this. 
We're coming to the end of a polar day. The seventh day begins. It's the day of rest. That's what's going on. And that's why 21st of December 2012 is bigger than just the end of the processional cycle. It's about this polar day. It's a very, very big zero point that we're honing in on, guys. Very, very big. This is the end of all the labours that we've gone through in many, many lives and many conditions. Here we are, covered in conditions, clothed in them. All of this is conditions on unconditioned consciousness. And that happened so that we could evolve and grow and go back to source much, much better than when we departed from source and parted ways. So this is the science of light. It's the language of angles, sacred geometry, the language of angels. And uh, light is measured by its angles, and some of those angles are bad, and some of them are good. Some are pleasure, some are pain. And we're all born with some good and some bad in our birth charts. And so that's why we need to know who we are. When you check your birth chart out, you know, oh, goodness, I've got, got an affliction in my stomach. You can tell. It's all in your chart. So, guys, thanks for listening and, um, and rocking up. That's the subject of light. And as you can see in the mythologies, it's hiding there in all the characters, whether you go to the Eastern books or the Western books, the Hindu, the Hermetic. It's all the same science. It's about light. And light manifests as truth, sound, the Logos, the Word. The Word was made flesh. Flesh is everything that you see. Thank you.